Hey guys, welcome back to Vietnam. Well, at least another video about Vietnam. So today we are going to review a article, two part video, I don't wanna knock it out all at once because I want you guys to be able to select the video that better suits what you're looking at. So today we're going to be talking about the pros of living in Vietnam. And tomorrow's video, we're gonna talk about 10 cons about living in Vietnam. So let's go ahead and get into this video. We're gonna look at what a lot of other backpackers have been talking about Vietnam and a lot of expats and tourists that talk about Vietnam and what they think is good and bad about living here long term. So let's get straight into it, man. So the pros of living in Vietnam, number one, getting around with no car. Uh, you don't need a car to live in Vietnam. <laughs> like, is that the state, is that it, the whole article? Buy a motorbike, that's how 98% of people get around in Vietnam. Despite all the cars that you see, most people just have bikes. Even people that own cars have bikes and they usually drive the bike during the weekends and stuff. Um, but rent a bike. Option two, use Grab and just taxi it everywhere. Two options, there's no real better way to do it. Public transportation, I would 100% avoid it. It's not worth it, you might die, I'm joking, but it is chaotic as hell. And don't flag down taxis, a lot of them are scams. We've talked about this so many different times. They're usually, they'll just put like a fake sticker on their car, they'll have a fake meter, they'll start bullshitting you. So use Grab if you're trying to get around, or if you want to get around on your own, buy a motorbike. Don't buy a car in Vietnam, they, trust me. Their tax is actually 50%. Number two, convenient intercontinental travel. This is actually my favorite part about Vietnam so far on this list and we're only at number two. You can travel anywhere around Asia, Russia, China. You have access to everything around us, which I love, man. And you can take sleeper buses to Thailand and Cambodia. You can fly over to Laos and just hang out there. It's really cool for doing visa runs back in the day. Visas are, visa runs are becoming a thing of the past with Vietnam because they're changing their rules on how many times you can do them now. Overall, if you live in Vietnam and you're working there, you could just like literally on the weekend go, go hang out in Bangkok or Go, go check out Phan Pien in Cambodia, or you know, go check out Bali, Indonesia. Everything is so close to you, which is really awesome. And it's really cool for Australians too, because you could fly back to Australia a lot faster than an American could fly back to America. Number three, diverse food options. There, there is actually a lot of food. Um, there's only like five different types of food in Vietnam. They just kind of mix and match it. So you just have like rice, um, noodles, different few different types of noodles. Uh, fun fact, actually, you know pho? Pho is actually the noodle. It's not what this, it's not soup, it's the noodle itself. So if you go to the north, uh, you'll find a lot of restaurants that sell pho noodles, but they fry it, they bake it. So you'll have like pho sticks and stuff like that. But there is a lot of stuff. My only thing I would say is stay away from is Western food. Western food in Vietnam is so bad. It's re ridiculous. Like, and then they do seafood pizza. Like Japan does it, it's not bad, but Vietnam just screws it up to all hell. And Vietnamese people will fight you teeth and nail about seafood pizza is the best thing in the world. But the crazy part is they never eat it. Like they'll take a nibble out of it and be like, no, no, I don't like to eat this type of food. I like my food. But it's like, like why, why are you defending it? But overall, Vietnam does have a lot of diverse food. Vietnam is one of my favorites when it comes to food because there's so much. Like Thailand, Indian, Chinese food is really good being out in Malaysia and Thailand, stuff like that. But you kind of get, when you move into an area in those countries, you kind of get stuck into like the top five foods to eat. You know, like we were in Rayon in Thailand or when we lived in Malaysia, like we were kind of designated to certain types of foods depending on where we were. In Vietnam, like you could find everything everywhere, which is really cool. You're not just stuck to bon mis and pho every day. Like you could literally get mi sao or some chicken or like kong ga or something like that or mi sao bo. Like there's so much stuff everywhere, anywhere. So definitely. Number four, plenty of jobs. Um, I'm gonna read this one because I'm quite curious. If you're interested in moving to, to an Asian country, you shouldn't have much problems finding a job. It seems to serve a hotspot for commerce. One of the top growing rules is English teachers. You can also outsource companies or call centers. Okay, let me, let me stop for a second here because I, I actually considered this, but it was working for a company called On Semiconductor out there. It's an American um, semiconducting company. I was gonna go there as a chemical engineer. And the salary pay was like 30% of the actual because I was in Vietnam. Yeah, it's more, but it's definitely like the, the hours. Like you were working like 40 to 50 hours a week and you were making like 2,500, 3,000 a month, but you got benefits and stuff. So you definitely made more than a teacher, but it was a career. And if you're moving to Vietnam, you're most likely trying to retire, you're trying to get married and enjoy life, or you're trying to kind of, you know, you're, you're kind of over the nine to five, right? So I wouldn't recommend that. There is a lot of people that actually live in Vung Tao that work for the uh, PV oil company, a lot of Russians, a lot of Western people. 
and they make a lot of money and they live good lives like nine to fives i would almost recommend that better than like a call center i would never work at a call center i actually had a, a girl i dated a long time ago that worked at one in saigon and dude, she does she would tell me the stories like she literally would lie to customers so she wouldn't get fired like it's insane it, how much Vietnamese people lie in their marketing and stuff and how much the government doesn't regulate any of it. Like if you get cheated, sucks for you, bro. And then outsourcing companies, I don't know what that really means, but English teachers, that's kind of the main job. That really is. There's not too much else. Unless you have a degree in like business or engineering, you don't really have a lot of options, unfortunately. And Vietnam is quite picky on who they hire for this. Um, otherwise, uh, healthcare, hospitality, and your curve. Again, no. Um, now, if you do... If you're prior military, I did actually work at the embassy for six months. I was helping do, doing the visa communication exam. So if people come in, I test their English and give them a check if they pass and then they go to the next step to get their visa. You can do stuff like that. Also, uh, also healthcare, not hospitality. Do not do that job. You, you'll get you'll get ran under the bus when it comes to money. But healthcare you can do. Dustin with Vietnam, I believe his name is. He's a guy that lives out in Vietnam for like eight, 10 years. He, he was doing acting or something out there in Hanoi or something for English centers. I did, a, I wrote programs for a school called APAC that I sold to them. So there is a lot of opportunity. I would suggest strongly be a teacher and then just figure out some entrepreneur stuff. Like these other job types, I would do, just go back to your home country. Like if you really need to live in like a beach area, go to Hawaii or something. Like don't do this stuff in Vietnam. If I am wrong on this and you work at a job like this and you have some insight, you want to talk and I can do another video on that, leave a comment below. But I am 99.9% .9 sure on what I just said. Like don't do it. Like it's not worth it. From my experience trying to apply for some of these IT jobs like that, it just wasn't worth it. Number five, plenty of activities. You'll never run out of things to do in Vietnam. For instance, you can hike, um, Climb rocks, Hala Bay, Hano. So this is going all over the place. Jeez. Uh, if your history, if history is your thing, you can also go to Vietnam War Museum. Dude, this war museum is depressing. Like, if you're an American, it's actually kind of a. Oh, here, no, this one is the one in uh, Ho Chi Minh. This is actually right next to EMG, the English Center. It's that quite depressing. It's four levels of uh, the orange, um, Agent Orange. It's, it's quite depressing. But you know, that, that's kind of war, right? Yeah, this is definitely talking about like if you're traveling around Vietnam a lot. If you're just living in Vietnam, like you're just staying in a certain city, it could get redundant real fast. There's only so much to do. A lot of these tour sites, they're so overran with vendors and stuff like that that you don't usually go to them a lot. And a lot of them are just kind of run down, dirty, or just boring as hell. So you'll go to it like once every month or two. And that's it. Like Hala Bay, you'll do it once, maybe twice. But after that, you'll probably never do a tour at Hala Bay ever again. There, there's nothing to it. And the city itself is literally boring as hell. I lived there for like three weeks and it's just, it sucks. And, you, and speaking of living there, you can't even legally live there. I actually was like hiding there, if that makes sense. I was staying with the girlfriend I was dating at the time. But Westerners are not allowed to rent apartments or anything in Hala Bay. You have to stay at a hotel. So as in plenty of things to do, not really. Like most Vietnamese people just go to coffee shops all day. I don't mean to sound like a bummer, but yeah, there's not a lot to do in Vietnam after a while. Like if you talk to anybody that lives there, especially English teachers, they will tell you that they pretty much just go to school. They go out to restaurants, they hang out with their girl or their friends. They go to sleep, they watch TV, watch YouTube, watch my videos, please subscribe um but yeah that's really it there's not much to do so plenty of things to do eh, not really you have to really travel a lot to see a lot but there is a lot to do in vietnam if you're willing to travel a lot yeah see like these these are one day things you'll never go back like i'm not saying that because they're bad it's just a building uh kayaking boating fishing the, the, these aren't as fun as they sound i don't mean to sound negative on that i just it's usually when you're going to these things it's just like it's stressful because these are usually jobs for people and you're out here trying to like have fun. But yeah, let's skip that. A lot of stuff to do, not really. When you go out there and work as a teacher, you tend to like become a part of the community. You start finding what you like to do. A lot of people start dating, go to coffee shops and stuff. So you'll figure it out. You really have to travel a lot. I mean that a lot. Like if you really want to see a lot of Vietnam, because there is a lot to see. It's just not in one spot. It's all over the country. Number six, affordable place to live. Oh yeah, yeah. You don't even need to make enough money. You can damn near be homeless. Uh, bear in mind, locals only make between uh, three to six million. So that's like uh, 170, $180, so like $300. I'm just guessing. So you can see like an average teacher makes between like 25, 35, sometimes 40 million Vietnamese dung a month. So you can definitely see where Western people make a killing out there. Living out there, yeah, yeah. I mean, seriously, look at that, man. Um, I stayed at a two bedroom house. Like, let me give you a couple examples. Uh, I lived in District 3. I had a three story house, 
two bedrooms, main floor, and it had an open roof. I paid 6.5 million for that. I'll leave this on the screen so you can see how much I paid in, in US dollars. I had another place in Bin Thon. It was seven bedrooms. Hear me out on this. I actually used this for a rental because I turned it into hotels. But I ended up paying 19.5 million a month for that. Mind you, it was seven, no, it was eight bedrooms and it had a whole f bottom floor area. Like it was huge, man. I had the biggest house in like the entire area. It was ridiculous. But more realistically, like you would be normal living. Uh, when I first moved to Vietnam, I stayed in this like condo apartment, single, it's like a studio apartment. I paid 4.5 million for that. And then when I lived up north, I paid between like four to like 5.5 million a month. So those are kind of my ranges, what I ever paid. And I always rented full houses. I never rented apartments except the very first one. So the, these prices I'm giving you, these were full houses. Like I had my own bathrooms, kitchens, sinks, driveways, everything. This is all me. And I always recommend that. I would also recommend don't get accommodations that are specialized towards us Western people. Because usually they charge you like seven, 10, 15 million a month for like a two or three bedroom apartment and they give you a microwave that you'll never use. They call it Western. It's just not worth it. And if you meet some local people, you can pay so much less. In general, you're probably gonna pay between like two to $300 a month rent. That's like 15, 10% of your actual salary. So stupid cheap to live for sure. Number seven, a noticeable coffee culture. Hell yeah, dude, there is so much coffee in Vietnam. And we talked about earlier things to do in Vietnam. Most Vietnamese, really just go to coffee shops all day. That is the biggest thing about Vietnam. You just kind of hang out at the coffee shop with your friends and kick it. Uh, I used to go there with my MacBook and get work done, but that's where you spend a lot of your time. There's actually, it's coffee culture in Vietnam is way different than the West and most of Asia, actually. You can't do this type of stuff in other parts of Asia. It just, people look at you weird. You could go to a coffee shop at like seven in the morning, have lunch there or order food to have delivered there and then stay there and, and do the same thing at dinner. Like you could literally just live at the coffee shop day after day and nobody will ever say anything to you. Like they'll talk to you sometimes, but they're not gonna be like, dude, you need to leave. You know, if you try to do that like Thailand or Vietnam, no, I'm sorry, Thailand or America or something like that, Malaysia, They'll actually tell you, they'll be kind of like, what are you doing, bro? You all right? You homeless? <laughs> you know what I mean? So you will get that. Vietnam, you could literally just hang out in a coffee shop all day, every day. And I used to kind of do this to an extent. Like we would hang out, I would hang out with friends. And we had this coffee shop in District 3 or near District 5 in, Dist in Bui Vinh. It was a really nice like VIP coffee shop. But we would hang out there like for like six, seven hours a day. And it had like really soft couches. They had a full menu. The pricey wasn't too bad. The coffee was amazing. And it was, it was like Cheers, like the, the movie Cheers, right? Like you'd walk in there, people you already knew were there, you'd sit down with them. Some of them would leave throughout the day, some others would come in throughout the day. And it was just like, that's what we did. It would be like, oh bro, I gotta, I gotta go teach a class real quick. All right, dude, deuce. And I'd just leave stuff there and I'd come back two hours later and some new people were there. Like, oh, David, here's your bag, man. Coffee culture is very, very different in Vietnam. Um, I definitely recommend if you go to Vietnam to get into it, definitely. Just make some Vietnamese friends and. Just kind of get a feel for it. Number eight, fun nightlife and karaoke. Oh, I hate karaoke in Vietnam. Karaoke in Vietnam is everywhere all the time. And the, and the karaoke is so bad. Like Vietnamese seriously are, they sound horrible. I don't mean to sound rude, but karaoke, you see me getting stressed. Like karaoke in Vietnam is so bad. Like. It's more of yelling, like it's more of who can yell louder, who has the louder speaker. There'll be there'll be weekends where I'll be I'll be at home, and there'll be a karaoke party over here at this house, right? And then these people will be like, "Oh, screw you, we're richer," and they'll have a karaoke party, but they'll turn it louder, and then they'll turn it louder, and I'm just like, <sighs> and then once they turn it off, like everyone's done, we're like, "Oh, finally, I can sleep." The guy over here turns it on, so there's always karaoke. There's Vietnam also has a ton of karaoke bars. They're actually going out of business. A lot of them are going out of business now. Ever since people started buying speakers and taking them home, karaoke bars have become a thing in the past. And during the pandemic, because a lot of companies would hold like parties at karaoke bars, the pandemic started stopping a lot of this. So they started going out of business because of that. But also during the pandemic, people started buying those speakers. And it's very normal to have a karaoke party at your house and not give a shit what your neighbors think. It's actually extremely common. And if you complain about it, they ask you if you want a beer. <laughs> like, it's, it's funny, but it's annoying. But if you're kind of like, you want to be quiet, you want to have a quiet night, it, you, good luck. And this is why I say it's always, I always talk about like retiring in Vietnam is very hard. And this is one of the reasons, is actually karaoke. Because 
you will never retire if you don't have peace and quiet all the time. Like there's gonna be like a lot of times where it's just chaos. Well, karaoke's it. Now the nightlife though, it's usually not right next door to your house, unless you're living on like a bad spot. The nightlife in Vietnam is actually really fun. Um, obviously I have Bui Vin. If you start meeting Vietnamese friends, there's some underground clubs and whatnot. Like they're just really fun bars and they have like, like I don't wanna say gambling, but they, they have similar stuff like that. I don't know, explain, like growing up in America, I hung out with Vietnamese people and they had these coffee shops, these Chinese coffee shops. And you go to them, you go downstairs, there's this Vietnamese like Bajan thing, like the game, and they'd have horse racing, stuff like that. And you can do that here. And District 7 has a lot of that, if, but you have to meet locals to get into these spots. They're, they're like VIP invite only kind of places, but you do have those. Overall, yeah, the nightlife is awesome in Vietnam if you're in a party, like the amount that I drank, man. <laughs> Good times, like definitely. It doesn't mention where. Yeah, so full qua, not really the best nightlife when it comes to party. If you want to party, like I'm being serious when I say this, Saigon has to be the craziest party town in all of Asia. No other country compares to Saigon, Vietnam when it comes to the nightlife. It's insane, it never ends. There's nothing you can't get. There's nothing you can't do and get away with. Like it's just, it's nuts. All these other cities that it's talking about are for old people. Yeah, I said it. They're just boring, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, Bahala Bay nightlife is boring. Like, most people go out to the restaurants, they have like a little walkway shopping area. People get like a hot pot to go to their hotel and fall asleep. You know, uh, Da Nang has a little better Russian, like market area and stuff like that, which is a little more happening. Hanoi has, is similar to like Bangkok and stuff. Like, it's got a good nightlife, but it's not too crazy. It's still in control. Phu Qua, it's a beach. It's an island. Enjoy the island, bro. But yeah, Ho Chi Minh, dude, dead serious. One of the best nightlife you'll ever see. Uh, let's go to hit number nine here. Remarkable landscapes, adventures, points. Hollow Bay is one of them, but I strongly suggest doing drive from South Vietnam all the way to Hanoi or the North. You don't have to go hard. Like my longest drive was uh, Kan Tho, which is right South of uh, Saigon. And we stopped in Lai Cho, which is like uh, Northwest of Vietnam. Like right next to that city is the border to China. Like it's, we drove all the way through Vietnam. I strongly recommend doing that, dude. Hai Zeng is northeast of Vietnam. You have to go there. That is one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in Vietnam. Uh, Halong Bay, if you do do that trip, it, it's cool for a day. Don't make any plans to stay in Halong Bay for a week. Never do that. Three days at most. Like, really? I mean, unless you just want to stay in the hotel and do nothing. These are the islands, aren't they? I think I've been there. I, I've been to so many spots, I don't know. <laughs> um, anyways, down to number 10. Plenty of sun, hell yeah. Um, the south, it's always sunny. It's hot season and not so hot season. Central, you'll get rainy season a little more. In the north, you get kind of seasons. But yeah, if you're in the south, it's always got beaches. It's always hot. Rainy season is still kind of humid and hot. It's just always hot. Like seriously, it's always hot. But yeah, once you get to central to north, it, it starts becoming like normal. <laughs> is that the word? But you start getting like seasons and stuff like that. So it's definitely worth it, man. So I hope that gives you some insights on the, let's go back to the top here, 20 pros of living in Vietnam. And I think these are pretty valid, man. These are really good. So hopefully these kind of ideas gave you some cool hits on what to expect when you get to Vietnam and what to kind of do to protect yourself. Now, if you need some advice on what not to do and how to be safe in Vietnam and what to expect for the, the bad stuff, Check out my harsh video on the truth of Vietnam. And the video after this one will be the cons of living in Vietnam. So we'll talk about the 10 things bad about living in Vietnam and we'll cover those. So till then guys, I'm gonna get out of here. I will see you again.